The idea behind the film was the structure of the storytelling was that the audience will feel, oh, I know what kind of film this is. It's a legal drama. We've got defense lawyer. We've got a, a, a prosecution lawyer. One wants to give him the death, the, the death penalty. The other one wants to you know, get him out. And they will feel comfortable with what kind of movie this is. But then it does sort of go along. The legal drama does play out. But that is really uh, you know, secondary to his character and to seeing what he undergoes in Guantanamo. So in a way, it becomes a, it becomes not such a conventional um, uh, 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 thriller structure, which I think which I think for me is what makes it interesting. But I I know that some reviewers have found that frustrating that they feel well it should be a, it's a it's a thriller it should be a thriller but it, it's not intended to really be a thriller that's just a kind of a hook to get you get you invested and in, and engaged. Well, and you wait a long time in the film to get to the brutality, which everybody is kind of on the edge of their seat waiting and know that they're going to see eventually. Yes, well, I think, I think the, 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 you know, it's a strange thing obviously with doing a subject like this where people um, kind of feel they've seen it before, they feel they've seen, um, you know, what went on in Guantanamo and other places before, but they haven't really. Uh, you, you films like Zero Dark Thirty or The Torture Report, you're not with any of these characters. You're not you're not empathizing with them. You are with whoever the CIA or the lawyers or whatever. You're not actually in the point of view of this person. So I think this is really a first for that, and it's a and and I think that that um, is something that is really Im important to see. Um, Obviously, I don't want to make I don't want to make a film which has violence for the sake of it, and nor do I want people to sort of get up from their seat and leave when when it comes on. So, but but my feeling was I want to go inside the character's head and make it a film about the subjective experience of what happens to you when you are tortured, rather than the kind of oh, there's a body which is being hit and beaten and whatever. It's 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 to ask ask the audience to put themselves in in his shoes. Well, there's a fine line with how much you can show without it being either a turn off too much, too little. Yeah. How did you decide, yeah. and did you leave anything on the cutting room floor? <laughs> yeah, I mean that sequence probably we talked about more than any other in the film, and the decision, as I said, was to try and make it in a stylized way so that so that. Uh, we see all the different things that happened. It's not everything that happened to him, but every, all, the, all the aspects of the mistreatment that you see actually occurred. You made a stylized choice as well. You kind of put us, the audience, in the box with him, the way it was shot and the way it was framed, your, your aspect. Yeah, so we go to, we go to, we go to a, a, a kind of academy ratio. It's called you know, the old fashioned ratio of, of, uh, of a very boxy frame, a pretty much square frame, every time we go back into the past with, with Muhammadu. And that has the double effect. One is it just very simply tells you as an audience, oh, we're in a different time period, which is when it's a complex structure like this film, that's very important to have a simplicity and a clarity. But the other thing that it does is that um, it makes you feel like you're in this, you know, this very tight, compressed kind of world. You, you can see ceilings, but no sides. And then the rest of the time we're in widescreen where you get all that space around the characters. So I think psych both psychologically and, uh, and in, as, a, as a kind of denoter of passage of time, I think it's very useful. How was it working with Jodie Foster? She isn't in a lot of films uh, right now, but I hear that she, I understand that she was very um, excited about doing this part. Yeah, well, obviously it's a thrill to work with Jodie because she's one of the, one of the great living legends of American cinema. Um, she's been, you know, acting since the 1970s, since the early 70s. I think, in fact, she was three years old when she first did, did her first commercial. And that's one of the reasons she doesn't she doesn't like to act much anymore is because she feels like she's done it all. So it takes something to come along that's like, oh, I haven't done this before, or this excites me. And I think that's what this was. I sent it to her at the right moment in her life when she, um, uh, 
you know, was interested in doing something totally different, something a bit political, something where she'd play a real character because she hasn't played real characters before. And, um, and, and also I think that, you know, she, her mother had recently passed away and she explained to me when I met her the first time to discuss it, that her mother had converted to Islam briefly in the seventies and had taken Jody to the mosque a couple of times. And that she'd always had this fascination because of that with the religion and with the difference between Christianity, which she was brought up a Christian, but the difference between Christianity and, and, and Islam. So that was a kind of way that she, that she kind of um, uh, found, found, you know, found a way in. But also it has to be said that this character, Nancy Hollander, the, the, the lawyer, is a very Jodie Fosterish character. You could see her as a kind of oh. an, an older version of some of the characters she played before. She's, she's no nonsense, she's tough, she can be a bit frightening. But inside, you sense this kind of broken, um, vulnerable character inside her, um, and that sense of protectiveness, and you know, a lot of armorage, a lot of armorage, armor. Um, um, so, so, yeah, she was she was the dream choice. I never thought we, that she would say yes, and she did. So, yeah, that was that that was that was wonderful. And then. Her and Tahar Rahim, who plays Mohamedou, you know, he's a quite a well-known French actor. I'm sure you've seen his film *A Prophet*, which is a great French film from about ten years ago. And um, they got on so well. Jody speaks fluent French, and so they chatted away in French. And they have such different approaches to how to, to performance, but they were kind of, you know, really vibing off each other in a very interesting way. There was a lot of improvisation in those scenes that they did together. Uh, Tahar. Tahar is, is unbelievable in this. How did you convey to him uh, how to play the humanity of, of Muhammadu? Well, to be honest, that was, you know, I've worked with Tahar before. We did a film called The Eagle 10, 15 years, 10, 11 years ago with Channing Tatum and Jimmy Bell. And at that time he spoke no English. So his English is, you know, pretty much no English. So he, he's worked incredibly hard to be able to perform now like very few foreign actors can to perform in a really high, high level in their foreign language. It's really hard. Um, but he has, I knew from working with him before that he has this incredible warmth and he's a lovely, he's a lovely man. A lot of true life movies, the closing credits, the closing cards are sort of like, oh, throwaways. It's a, kind of, it's a rare time when you can have a card at the end of the film, which totally sends you off in a direction that you didn't imagine and which totally, I think cha changes your experience with the movie. And then of course, after that, we have footage of the real Muhammadu, which again is a very commonly used device, but commonly used because it's always so effective. And in this case, doubly effective because you realize that the real Muhammadu is just as lovely and warm as the person depicted by, by, by Tahar. And it's amazing how he's still so vibrant and so positive. He's, he's incredibly resilient and he harbors, he harbors no anger or ill will. And that's what's the most amazing thing about him is that he forgives and wants to understand. And that's the message of the film, I guess. Forgiveness and understanding.